What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to GMA's World Podcast. And today we're going to be finalizing week eight in the NFL with Monday Night Football, the Bucks, and the Giants. Now, many of you guys, like myself, probably use this you know this score you kind of predicted that the score would be a blowout um many of us didn't get what we were expecting um it didn't turn out to be that way i think the giants played tom brady as well as they can play him uh but unfortunately on the other side we had two turnovers from daniel jones a lot of other ridiculousness was going on but this play right here i just wanted to start it off with that because you know i looked at it several times as they reviewed it and i believe that it was pass interference now you know it is tom brady you're going to give him the benefit of the doubt uh, but when you slow it down, he definitely, Winfield definitely gets to the ball. Well, not to the ball. He gets to the player way before the ball's there. So it, in a true definition, in my opinion, that's pass interference. You got you got to, you know, pretty much call that. You know, it, it is what it is. But again, you know, the Giants made a lot of mistakes. And I know a lot of people are going to say that doesn't matter. The ref should call the game the way it should be called, especially the Giant fans that are very disappointed. Because like I said, looking at it on the surface, I was very disappointed with the call uh, to begin with. And um, in a determining factor of a game, when it comes down to that, a team is fighting. We know that the Giants suck. So it's not like, it's like, all right, yo, it was a chance that they were supposed to win the game. They just fought hard that game. So I'm thinking the refs are like, you know what? They, 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 these dudes are terrible anyway. They ain't going to really worry about it. But you know, the Saints and the Bucks are battling for the division. So we got to make it a little bit more interesting. That's the thought process that I got. Because when you review it and look at it and it's in slow motion, you clearly see it's pass interference. But let's take a look at what, you know, some of the things that went on. Um, Daniel Jones, 256 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. All right. Those two interceptions, you're going up against a top 10 defense in the Buccaneers, which Tom Brady always usually has when he's winning. It's not a knock on him, but he's been very, very fortunate in his career to have a very decent defense. Um, unfortunately, they didn't play well to start, but they, you know, kind of locked down towards the end um, and they were able to figure out some things that were going on. Uh, the, offensively, you know, Alfred Morris comes out. He wasn't what we thought he was going to be, but he had to go out there and make a start. I didn't even know he was still playing, to be honest. I was like, yo, this dude old as dirt. I remember, yo, Alfred Morris, I remember, wasn't he on, I believe he was on the Redskins, the Cowboys. Like, this dude's been all over the place, I believe. Because I just remember, I'm like, yo, how is this guy still playing football? But whatever, the Giants are just doing whatever they want. doesn't really matter. Uh, Sterling Shepard, 10 targets, 8 receptions, 74 yards. Evan Ingram, 10 targets, 5 receptions, 61 yards. Darius Slayton, 5 receptions, 9 targets, 56 yards. Golden Tate, 31 yards, but he had that touchdown uh, that was pretty decent um, to go ahead and help the Giants stay in contention. But like I said, with the way that they're playing right now, I don't really know where this team is headed, to be honest. I, I don't understand it. And you know what's weird about all this? A lot of people think that, you know, teams are going to tank. They think that the Cowboys are going to tank, whatever. But it, there's a lot of terrible teams. So whoever end up, you know, tanking for Lawrence or whatever they're calling it, it's going to be very interesting because a lot of these teams are really, really bad. And it's not even like they're trying intentionally to, you know, to tank. They're just not good. Th their players are not better than the other team players. And to be honest with you, Tom Brady's on a mission, right? And the league knows that this story would be huge. People have to understand the storyline about this, Tom Brady leaving Bill Belichick and winning the Super Bowl, bro, that'll be a crazy headline. So the league has to do what they need to do, okay? So the Giants was already in a situation where, they, you know, they were behind the eight ball. Now, with the way that everything played out towards the end, that just blatantly showed us, guys. Because like I said, I was debating it. I was up, you know you know, watching it over and over again, debating it with friends. It's like, yo, that 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 right there is pass interference. So which, whichever way you want to go about it, it is kind of weird, but things like that happen. Remember with the Saints, the Saints got cheated too. You know, with the Rams, like things are just so obvious sometimes and we can't really control the outcome of it because there's already something that, you know, whatever, either the ref is blind in one eye and can't see out the other or whatever it is, but there really is no excuse for it because realistically they slowed it down. It was all slow motion, okay? You can see visibly what was going on, okay? And regardless of how, you know, Daniel Jones two turnovers, he kept them in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like dudes, they fought, they were still in the game. You can't let a game end like that. If the play is the play, that, that's all I'm saying. If the play is questionable and it's visibly that the guy was there, he wasn't even looking at the ball. That's like a true definition of passing. Bro, the dude's just running into him. He just, dude, he's running with his head, not looking back, nothing. They, he did everything possible to just let you know, look, we're supposed to win this. Like, yo, we already spoke to the refs. Everything's good. Don't worry about it. We're going to be all right. 
And that's pretty much what I got uh, from that last second play. Now, Tom Brady, 28 of 40, 279, two touchdowns, and a smashing helmet um, situation on the sideline. He was very, very frustrated. Now, remember, you guys remember how good Tom Brady used to be with the Patriots, and he used to always lose to the Dolphins? I believe at this point right now, if the Giants were decent, just, just let's just say they were a decent team, the Giants is really Tom Brady's kryptonite. Because that team sucks, and they were they were winning for a large part of that game. I, I don't think you guys really understand. Like it's just some teams that players don't play well against. Tom Brady cannot deal with uh, Nick Foles, and he can't deal with the Giants, no matter who's on the team, because that roster should not have been competitive. I'm sorry, dude. That's the real reason why the Bucks should have lost this game, because they allowed a team that had no business being in the game to just be in there, just chilling. Like, yo, what's good? Because the Giants played so tough that everybody on the Bucks sideline was scared. And it, like, I, look, it is what it is. I was just like, yo, okay, cool, whatever. But Leonard Fournette, he comes out 15 carries, 52 yards, right? Ronald Jones, 23 yards on seven, seven carries. Scott Miller, you know, whatever he's doing, you know, he's obviously, you know, wide receiver. But Mike Evans, 55 yards, he had seven targets, five receptions, he had a touchdown. Rob Gronkowski, like I said, as long as they keep that connection going, that's gonna be a problem leading into the playoffs because they're starting to get more comfortable with it. Uh, Scott Miller's not really a slouch also, but you know, he didn't really do much this game. Six targets, three catches, 35 yards. So you can see defensively the Giants played well is what I'm trying to explain. And a lot of you guys that, you know, just thought it would be a dominant blow like I did, you were very disappointed because you expect teams to go out there and destroy bad teams. And that's not what I got from it. I'm pretty sure that's not what you got from it. So everybody was left hanging like, yo, what is this? They don't deserve the win. And then it comes down to that play. Uh, so, you know, going forward, we're going to see how it works out because obviously the Saints are right there. Even without Michael Thomas, a lot of their players are hurt. They're still fighting. I, I think Michael Thomas just wants out of New Orleans. I don't know what's going on in that situation, but we have to go ahead and figure out some of the things that are going on with that because it is becoming a situation where it is going to come down to, you know, the Bucks and the Saints playing each other and that game really being the deciding factor the way it's going. So it, it does benefit Tom Brady in the storyline right now to make sure he did not get that loss. So everything is looking pretty decent right now. You know, I'm just watching it. It's, it's very enjoyable. It does make the games more exciting down the stretch. But in all honesty, I don't think that the refs did the right thing. Um, you know, most people were siding with Tom Brady like, yeah, you know, I'm glad that they huddled up and got the call right. Everybody's gonna say whatever they gotta say. When Tom Brady was playing like trash in the beginning of the season, everybody was saying he was done. As soon as he started playing well, they're like, oh, okay, the dude's the GOAT. Like, listen, it, it, it's Tom Brady. And that's why Bill Belichick wanted him out of uh, the, uh, New England, because there's too much BS that goes on around him. And no matter what it is, he's never a guy that, that gets the blame for it. And I think that that's why Bill, Bill Belichick, like, yo, I'd rather lose with Cam Newton than deal with this guy. Because this guy right here is just always an excuse about it. And that's nothing to take away from him. He earned it with his play, but this was a wild, wild blown call. And I think it was intentional. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. Enjoy your day. One love, y'all.